Jared, as the leader of the secondary, what are the things that you think has made this a different year than recent years? I guess? It's kind of, as a unit, we fully understand kind of the defense. And we trust one another better than we have ever before here. That's a big thing. And uh, kind of our communication on the field has been very crisp and not many mistakes. How, many, how much of a role is that on you? I mean, being the, the veteran leader and everything, have you done things differently to try to foster all that? Yeah, I kind of just assumed the position of my own, on my, on my own, of being the leader of the secondary and kind of a leader on the defense. So stepping up and communicating to everybody is a role that I stepped in. Number one defense in the nation against the score and total defense. Uh, are those things, do they mean a lot to you? Yeah, that means something, but we, we don't pay attention to it. I mean, as long as we keep doing what we're doing this far, it's, uh, we'll continue to be number one, but we're not really thinking about it because you could slip at any time. What's the biggest thing you'd like to see this defense do even better in the last down the stretch here? Um, get a lot more turnovers is a big thing. We always preach about it, and uh, getting more turnovers will help us a lot. You'll talk a lot about how good of a year Jordan's having, and obviously your girl gets a lot of help and stuff. Are you, are you okay being the less spoken about guy who might be kind of directing traffic in the back? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind that. Um, I don't really kind of shy away from the spotlight. It's just kind of who I am. But those two guys have been having accepting, exceptional years. And uh, pretty much everybody in the secondary, uh, Jeremy Clark's done a great job with transition to corner. Stripling, he's had a hamstring injury, but he's been having a great year. Monty Thompson, Thomas comes in and does a good job. So as, as a unit, I did pretty good as well this year. Is this bye week especially difficult for you guys having to sit on that loss? Um, no. I believe the team moved forward rather quickly. It was a very tough loss, but um, Coach Harbaugh said put steel, steel in our spines, so um, that's what we've done. The past is the past. We're just moving forward to Minnesota. What does that mean to you when he said that? What I mean, how how do you go about day to day putting in practice what that means? I mean, in football, I guess, you know, you just always got to have a short mind about everything, wins or losses. It really doesn't matter about if you won the game or you lost the game. It's just the next, the most important game is the next game. So you just move forward as quick as possible. I feel like everyone's kind of given that, a different answer to that question about what the bye week was, was like. You know, some guys said they weren't over until they got back on the practice field. Other guys said it's still bothering them. Other guys said they were over it immediately. Is that one of those... One of those deals where everyone just kind of had to go their separate ways and then you hope you can clear your mind? Uh, not necessarily. Um, it's kind of the person's kind of own mm -hmm. how they handled the loss, yes. But um, as a team, we just like moved forward, I thought, rather quickly. So um, some guys said when we got back on the field, we got back on the field, what, that Tuesday. So it really wasn't that long of a time in between that and the game anyway. So a few days and pretty much everybody was over with. What'd you do for the bye week? Um, Did you leave or? Yeah, leave? I went home briefly back to Ohio and uh, spent time with my brothers and my family, which is pretty nice. But um, I really don't like bye weeks, kind of. I like to just roll straight through. I don't really want to take a break. Harbaugh was saying he was inspired, actually, was his word, that by the way you guys were so sharp on Sunday's practice. Was that something you guys you noticed as well in terms of how you guys were playing? Yeah, it seemed like the guys came back from the break with no rest. We got a few days off, which was nice, but as soon as we got back here and on the field, it was um, back to our normal routine. Everybody was pretty crisp, though. Talking to DeMonte yesterday, it was pretty complimentary about the way you helped him get settled in at safety and kind of walk him through most plays and most of the time let him know where he is to be. How, how often do you talk to him and the other guys you're back there next to? I try to talk to whoever is back there pretty much every play. Kind of just expect, kind of expect what's coming before it comes. And uh, as long as we're communicating on the same page, we're always going to be right. And uh, you know, in the back end, you really don't want too many busted coverages because that leads to explosive plays and uh, easy touchdowns. You always done that, or when were you comfortable enough in the defense to, to be, be that guy? 
It took time. I, I can remember as a freshman, I wasn't speaking at all. But um, just over time as a sophomore and a junior, I kind of assumed that role. It's kind of similar to uh, as a freshman, I watched Jordan Kovacs play. He was really good at communicating with everyone and uh, just understanding the defense and taking that leadership role in the back end. So I kind of tried to model myself after him. So I guess when you say you're, you're okay with being, um, you know, shying away from spotlight, things like that, where always been that way, where did that come from, why, you know, other guys are more than happy to get out here and talk and do things and, and get attention and you've just always been. I've always shy. been that way. I don't want to say that if you don't think it is. I'm not necessarily shy. I will speak up, but uh, it's just kind of quiet, it's soft spoken. I've always been that way uh, since I was a kid. Um, it's kind of just the way I was. Kind of, I don't know really my reason why. I just don't really like a lot of attention. Well, does that translate to your game? That maybe you're don't get too high, too low, or anything like that? Is there, is it, are you that even keeled and kind of everything? Uh, yes, most, most definitely. Um, I'm pretty even keeled, like you said. You kind of said the exact words, you know. But I never get too high on my wins, never too low on my losses. I'm just always level-headed. When you were learning how to be a leader and stepping into a role, did, did you try to force yourself against her? Like, normally I think that those guys – are more likely to speak out and be loud and less soft spoken. Did you did you have to find out that it was okay to, to be yourself and still be a leader? Was that a, a struggle to no, push it, those two? It really wasn't a struggle. Uh, speaking up was kind of um, just a different thing I had done. I've never really been a vocal leader, but it wasn't a problem for me to do so. And uh, coaches, Coach Mallory was here at the time. Aubrey Pleasant was a GA here, and they were always on me about communicating. And uh, it just kind of helped me. They had to.